Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the toast. Happy Tuesday that feels seriously like a Friday. It's like, oh my God, so much to talk about, so much to celebrate, Friday, so much to be like grateful a for. Saturday. Just fun, good times. You guys, if you don't follow us on Instagram, one, what is you doing? What is you doing? And two, Claudia and I are together. Yeah. That's why it's an extra special Tuesday that feels like a Saturday. It's a Tuesday and Turdy chose me. Yes, I took a very impromptu flight last night. I had been thinking about coming. Ben is gone this whole week playing in a pro-am, which is a golf tournament where professionals um, team up with amateurs. It's like a celebrity pro-am. And Ben is like one of the celebs playing with a pro and he's really excited about it. And I tried not to clown on him because like it is cool and it's like a big deal so I'm happy for him and you know how I loathe being alone and I don't know it was just I thought I could do it and the second I actually left before Ben did like I couldn't do it I got so freaked like I just can't be alone like I don't like it it's so boring well so I'm here New York sauce is my game I'm so happy you're here when you told me you were thinking about it I was so excited I was like Stay home for a little bit, like wait till you're itching to get out. And then all of a sudden I'm getting a pedicure and she's like, you couldn't wait for me till tomorrow. And I, I was do like, need a pedicure. I still need a manicure, so sure. And also there was just so much reason to come. Nobody here has met Romeo, except for your husband. When he came to New York, he met Romeo. But Romeo hasn't been introduced to Bruno or the, the human beings in this family. Not me. Olivia had it. Him. Olivia had it. So it was kind of like he didn't meet his all his cousins it was just sort of Overdue. necessary Overdue. yeah so um, i have no regrets i'm so glad i came and we have so much work to do actually we have like a photo shoot that we need to we have some new merch coming out that's going to be so sick maybe our sickest drop yet so we could be together for the photo shoot instead of when we do our transatlantic photo shoots which are good but it's not as good as us being together yeah we have patreons podcasts vlogs tiktoks to make like it's honestly, it, it's this, a content week. It's a content house. Yeah. Right now. This morning I was running around like making content yeah, with the like, sourdough. Where's the lighting? Where's oh, the selfie light? And I had to try your sourdough. Like I had to come. She had to come. So you did try my sourdough. The one that I made two days ago that I said on Instagram, like I made some mistakes. I wasn't proud of it, but it's still edible and tasty. It was in my bread box. But then I also made a fresh loaf of sandwich bread because I thought that you deserve fresh bread for your stay. Yeah, so I got here yesterday and I had two slices of bread. One from, like you said, this sort of not perfect two-day-old sourdough. She toasted up, put a little butter and salt. And the thing is, is like you could put butter and salt on, on like a, a piece of crap. On a duty. On an actual log of duty. And it would be the best thing. So like, it's really unfair to judge, but it was really good. And I could tell like if it, it was like a little bit right, writer. The, the taste was good, but the consistency is not. That's what I'm working on. But you had also made a perfect loaf of sandwich bread. Let me tell you this bread, it was so good. Like the sandwich bread, I know everyone's sourdough this, sourdough that. And I'm sure once I have a perfect piece, I'll be on board. But sandwich bread, homemade. Five ingredients. Like, I, I understand there's this movement behind sourdough and I need that same sort of energy for sandwich bread because it was so doughy, so soft, lighter than air, plus the salt and the butter. It was truly heavenly and like just a delicious way to end a long day, a long travel day. Yeah, just a nice piece of bread. I should have added some honey. Do you like a little honey? No, no, I don't like honey. She doesn't like honey. I mean, like I do. Well, the sandwich bread was made with sourdough discard, so it was inspired by the sourdough. But I think the big difference is why people like sourdough is it doesn't require yeast because your starter is what's like fermenting and what's going to make it rise. And because there's no yeast, it's really digestible for your body, which is what makes it healthy. Mm. Whereas when you do the discard recipes, if you're making other bread, you do use yeast and apparently yeast, we're anti-yeast, I guess. That I'm not down with. Also, someone gave me a tip if my sourdough is having a hard time rising to put some yeast in it just while I get the hang of things. That's like against the rules. Screw sisterhood. Literally, screw sourdough. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it and I have a new one going today taking all of my learnings because I know what I did wrong last time. Mm -hmm. And so today we try again, we're troubleshooting. So I'm gonna be here just watching sourdough, probably making content. And I also felt like, you know, we. I feel like we do, remote episodes for like long stretches of time, but they need a break. Like we need episodes in person together just to keep the juice and the and the freshness of the toast alive. So I felt like for the, also for the podcast, I had to come down here. It's just, it's, it's layered. Yeah, I feel that, you know? Just to switch things up, it keeps things exciting and fresh. There's like a new energy, new joie de vivre. Right. The flamingos get their shine. Even though they have been getting their shine. Even though they have been. So yes, I agree. There was more reasons to come. There was no reason not to come. No, and like when I, over the last, you know, two years since you've lived here, I've slowly accumulated like things here, makeup. I don't really need to pack anything. I brought Romeo's food and some sports bras because I plan to go for a run. Because we're going to be so active because even though we're together and we're on like our wellness journeys, mm -hmm. like 
if you come in the way of mine, I told her I'm packing her things. I will drive on the highway. I don't. I don't like like the inference you're making that I no. have this sort of reputation for coming here and destroying no, no, your no, health no. journey. Let me it's tell just you like what us it is. being together. We feel like celebrating and having a sweet treat. Exactly. Like family is love, and food is a part of that, and that's huge. But also, when we're both on our diets let's just get real yeah like, I like I how have, we by the way I like how we've been journeys. saying wellness and health journeys because like diet is like a word you can't say anymore but we're gonna say it. we're on diets we're on diets here's what it is it's not you being a bad influence or me but I'll go through the day and I have a couple points in my day where I get really hungry and I'm like okay I need to overcome sustain like, I need to go get my snack like get creative make something but when I'm with you you have your points in the day so your so points true. become my points and I wasn't even hungry but we're in the kitchen because you're hungry therefore I'm eating when I wasn't even hungry yet I think it's Instead of and blaming me. No, and by, sorry, and vice versa. I think instead of blaming me, you should just blame sort of like the layout of your house. Your kitchen is really at the center of all the other points. Um, and it just becomes the natural hanging out place more so than the living room. So maybe you should move if you want to lose weight. No, no, I'm doing okay. I just think I need to ignore your hunger cues. And listen to my own. Yeah. And by the way, I agree. Because every time I'm in like a good stride and I come down here, it's destroyed. Also, for the Patreon, I think we always feel like we have to be eating on right, camera. Right, like about to do a mukbang. Like well, I do want to do a crumble cookie mukbang. So we have to make space in our diets for that. I think we can do a crumble cookie mukbang. Like not to be toxic. Like turn this off. Seriously, if, if you can yeah. handle it. Yeah. If we don't eat all day and then oh. we do it at like five o'clock. I thought you were going to say we do a crumble cookie mukbang. And then we make ourselves throw up. Like... <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say. I'm like, oh man, she's really crazy. No, I was going to say like, we don't eat all day. Well, just and if we can do something. that and then at five o'clock, we can have cookies. I've ended up on crumble cookie talk. And while the cookies look really good, people keep putting the calories. I thought you were going to say like up. for the vlog, we'll throw up. I'm oh like, my okay, God. She's crazy. Honestly. <laughs> but do you know that there's between 800 and 1,000 calories in one crumble cookie? So like, even if we can control ourselves, which who can? Who can have one bite of a delicious cookie? How much calories is a bite? Like, 200? That's crazy. I know. I I really was shocked. Like, where's the FDA? That's like kind of crazy. Damn. Okay. Actually, I don't know if that's in our, like, also there are so many points in our life where we're not on a diet. Maybe we do, do that then. then. I was watching this girl's TikTok because um, I have ended up on like diet talk and there was this girl who she's like, I'm trying to lose a hundred pounds um, in the next year or whatever. And she was like, I'm sharing what I'm learning because I'm not someone who's ever done, this is all new to me. So I actually really related to her journey because I had never really learned, like known much about like health culture. And she was like, one of the, her video of this day was like, it shocks me when I think about how many calories I used to eat. Cause like, and, and now I'm like minding my calories so much and I'm still eating a lot. But before when I was just sort of like reckless and eating whatever I want, I can only imagine the thousands of calories that I was eating compared to now. And it was such a good point. Like it's really uncool like of like there to be so many calories and like in the good things. No, and it's just like big food. Big food. Doesn't They're trying give to keep a us rip about you. And actually they they don't like you mm -hmm. and they want you to be unhealthy. It's really crazy to think about. That's why I'm making five ingredient bread. Better because we should be able to eat bread. We should be able to eat bread. But it shouldn't be so bad. Better ingredients, better starter, Jackie O's dough. And also when I do get my sourdough correct, which I feel like we're we're so close. This could be the one, assuming I'm not a dumb bitch. You yeah, know? Maybe, and sometimes it happens. Maybe it's just like Turdy's influence. Per oh, because I'm really like wanting to, to show impress up. you 100%. I'm not too big to admit that. Then I'm going to do my sourdough redemption vlog. And I know like I have so many cheering fans. Yeah, no, everyone's sort of been just watching you in awe. And so supportive. So supportive. Thank you guys so much, including you. I mean, it's bread. Like you weren't ever going to get me like not to be excited about food. It's true. And it's bread. I'm you still can eat healthy bread. Could you believe? I know. That's the thing that I, I'm starting to understand why the sourdough community is as for that's what people say like when they go to Europe and they eat pasta every single day and they come back and their pants are too big on them how is that possible because if you eat pasta every day in America you come back your pants aren't going to fit and it's really all about like ingredients pasta itself inherently isn't bad big pasta not good big pasta can you make pasta dough from sourdough probably we could probably make pasta and you have one of those kitchen aid you just have to get the attachment for pasta yeah but I'm sure we could also make like there are other kinds of pasta you can make like gnocchi rolls yeah, where or you don't bow tie need, where you don't like need that. But maybe we'll have to head to Williams Sonoma, perhaps but for the vlog. For the vlog, homemade pasta. Look, we're still eating in the vlog. No, we're still talking about food. No, seriously, how do you like? How are you a content creator who like makes long form content and it's like not about food? What else is it about? 
Well, food is one category, but it's definitely... No, but even people who are in different categories like always do a vlog. Like, let's go do my Taco Bell favorites. Like, even if you're makeup, you still... It's so crazy how food is seriously like a huge category across all different types of content creators. Like, everyone, no matter what their niche is, like, everyone does food. Because food brings people together. It literally brought me to Florida. It did. Take me to Florida. Oh, and we have so many TikTok ideas. Everyone's been asking us to do the sister dictionary these girls on TikTok, um, sisters, which I think people just always think of us, which is so sweet. They went viral because they were like going through the different words that they use in their family. That's like inside jokes, but like, how would a sister say, you know, X? And it was, makes no sense to us, but it was really cute and funny, very inside jokey. And everyone's been asking us to do it, like toaster edition. And I have so many ideas. So I'm going to put Jackie to work. Yeah, we're making a lot of content. As I said, this is Hype House. Oh my God, I've been meaning to talk about this. I've been meaning mm -hmm. to talk about this. I can't believe I forgot. So I went to the Morgan Wallen concert, which I spoke about extensively, and something like kind of crazy happened to me there. And I wasn't, I don't know why I didn't share it. Okay, I'm being dramatic. It's like not that crazy. Um, but you know, Morgan, and what I learned of the Morgan Wallen um, show is his audience really isn't like typical country. It's like very Gen Z. It's like very like college age, very frat. So it was like young folk. Yeah. Not our target demo, I would say. Um, and let me tell you, I met like probably five people who all came up to me and they were like, oh my God, I love your TikToks. And they would turn to their like friend and be like, oh my God, it's the TikToker. Like referring to oh, me wow. as a TikToker. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was, I just wanted to remark on it. I think, you know, there are, people always say like, was there a moment in your career where like you knew you things knew, were taking you off? You made it. Yeah, and this I think is definitely like an inflection point. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Did it feel as good as you like would have hoped? It felt a little stupid. Like, <laughs> where the, uh, the kind of reducing all that I do to TikTok when it's Ooh. like, actually, if you only knew what was waiting yeah. for you on other platforms like Spotify or YouTube. Um, so it's funny, you know, they say, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And here I am being reduced to 60 second silliness. Yeah. It just makes you think. Just. You always want what you don't have. It's true. Now that I have it, I'm like, now do I want TikTok this? TikTok fame. It's not what you thought. Do I want this? So now what kind of fame are you looking for? <sighs> That's an amazing question. Because I do feel, I do feel like I used to want it all. Very Sharpay Evans. I want it all. I want it. I want it. I want it. The fame and the fortune, it all, I want it all. Still definitely want the fortune. Don't get it twisted. But now I'm feeling like really comfortable in the level of, you know, celebrity that we are. It used to be like, this was a stepping stone for me. But now I feel like really at peace with where we're at. I feel like I actually don't want it to go up from here. Because, you know, every time we have like a little bit of a bump, it gets like a little scarier. You know, the stakes are higher. I see what happens to other people. And it's like, you know what? I'm good. Like, I think like this, like, I want my, I don't want to go down. Yeah. But I kind of don't want to go up either. Like, I feel like it's good. Oh, that's so lovely. Yeah. I feel like maybe that's just like a part of maturity, like being grateful for what you have. And I think before I used to think like, hustle, hustle. And it's like, that's a little toxic. Like, it's okay. Wow. But yeah. I think also th it's two different things. It's like, there's the work element where it's like hustle and we want to, you know, do Keep our working. best. But then also like the fame that yeah. is less... I'm enticing. Yeah, it, it is. Was. Yeah, no, I like I like our corner of the internet and I like the size of it. I think it's really no, we can it's grow. good. We can grow. No, but like if you did, like that's where the like the toxicity grows too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like we have something really good going on here. I feel like I think so. Don't too. tell your friends about the toast. Like it's good. No, don't tell them gatekeep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, girl boss. Because things gatekeep. that things that get gate kept and then like get blown up and everybody's obsessed with, like the internet then destroys. Yeah. No, I don't think we have to worry about that like overnight virality at this point. Yeah, it can't be overnight. It's been ten years. Yeah, it's not happening. And I think that's better. I think there's longevity in you know like the sort of slow build. We're doing at a glance. Oh fuck! You know we have a tendency to go at a glance always, but especially when we're together. Yeah. Now I want to say something. When was the last time I was here? In. Was it when I went to St. Bart's or one more time after that? I feel like it was when you went to St. Bart's because then I came to New right. York in April. So uh, March, yeah, the, and then you went to St. Bart's. So, and I think I remarked on it when I was here, but in case you aren't aware and you're looking for your Allison Lou claw clip, I can always see it when I'm sitting right here. It's in the corner of your studio under your other chair. And it's such a great claw clip. I wear it every day. And I feel like maybe you've been looking for it. No, and you I can't haven't. see it. I haven't been looking for it, but one day I'll find it and I'll be grateful. And also sometimes at the end of the show, I do want to put my hair up. So I'll be glad to know that it's there, but that just solves one day of hair up because I don't want to sit with a 
ponytail on my wrist, it's hard to be a girl. <sighs> it's really hard. It is, but wouldn't want to be anybody else. Na 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 um just kind of feels futile to like go into the fast five stories more together you know yeah and the fast five stories today are seriously so crazy in a way of like i found a new publication of where i'm looking for stories are you gonna tell us what it is you're gonna surprise us oh i'll tell you what it is but i just want to describe the experience that i have there which is like they write up first of all they don't categorize things like i can click all stories and i just see the stream of everything that's published not what they think is most popular that i don't care about so i can just see everything and they just like write up everything which is helpful which is no it's it's nice so i'm picking stories that i wouldn't have seen otherwise because i find them to be like you know just interesting niche and and good not you know so-and-so's tiktok like right right um entertainment tonight has just been a really great resource okay shout out entertainment yeah so it's like really changing the type of stories i love that yeah me too (sighs) i'm just happy to be together it's so hot romeo's loving it here yeah, Romeo and Bruno. So the rivalry, there's definitely oh, a rivalry. Let's talk about that. I feel like Bruno doesn't like Romeo. Well, we knew that was going to happen. Bruno is very... Loyal. Self-centered. Yeah. It's the reason why I have not gotten another dog, because I don't think Bruno would like that. It's I think actually he really would true. dislike it. However, I feel like w- when Bruno and Romeo are together, there's like a few minutes of like play fighting, and then there's harmony. Yeah. So I think that will translate long-term. Like, you know, this trip, there'll be discord but in the future there will be harmony it reminds me a lot of theo and bruno yeah but bruno has now taken on the role that theo i know but i think also bruno's hazing romeo being like it wasn't easy for me it's not going to be easy for you it's true because like when bruno came into this life theo was just like sort of the king and there was nobody else and there wasn't ever going to be anybody else and bruno worked really really hard to wiggle his way into our hearts and And to earn his stripes and it's true it's true he's not going to make it that easy for romeo so brew and true bro and true We've called them Bro and Roe and Brew and Rue. Rue and Brew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rue yeah. and Brew. So, but that's Bro exciting. and Roe. And Bruno is a brother, so that works. Brother Brew. Brother Brew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, we have a lot to get to today, kind of. What's today, Tuesday? Yeah, just regular Actually, old we don't. Tuesday. I'm recording Redheads today, so. Oh, my God. What am I supposed to do? Maybe I'll go for a run then. Oh, you're going to work out without me? What about pickleball? Uh, we could do pickleball too. Oh, well, you're going to get double? Well, the I'm on a running program. This is week two of a 12-week thing. And in the beginning, it's like only 25 minutes. So it's not like a full. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So email or questions, redheadsbookclub at gmail.com. I loved this month's book and it was my choice. The other girls get really competitive about like their book being good and uh, like having the best books. And I think because I'm like, at a glance and I just want the redheads to be good like I don't care if it was my book or their book truly I know that sounds like I'm better than them it does but no like I'm really interested in like the group success that's to the say betterment that, that's, of that's to say that they're not yeah 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 no you're just kind of like jabbing is like no I don't I don't know why they get everyone just like gets really protective over their choices in my book club too like I can tell even when a book is bad and I do it too the person who chose it it takes a really bad book for them to just like be like yeah like this was crap but they fight a little bit like to the death just to like not have wasted everyone's time. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I do it too, because my book, like, not the Demon Copperhead, but the one before, like, it stunk. And then we, like, investigated afterwards. It was, like, supposed to be based on a true story, and, like, the guy was lying. Like, there was, like, some drama, so. Oh, yeah. interesting. So, yeah, I am proud that this was my book. I feel like usually when it's my book, I'm actually more critical because I'm, like, nervous that people aren't going to like it. Mm-hmm. But I'm, we are actually on a really good Terror don't say it out life. loud oh yeah except our last book was so bad but the oh. episode was so funny that it all worked out in the end that's the thing it's like the best books are great but then book club's kind of boring because we're all just sitting around and like talking about how much we liked it a bad book is dreadful to read and you don't oh, want to talk but- about it so then you talk about fun stuff no 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 no. in our book club like when the book is so bad like we all come in angry and like yeah. we're all just like we actually make each other laugh about how bad the book was you should read the last book that we read then. no no because the actual reading of a bad book is so dreadful but we read first lie wins was that oh no that wasn't for book club we read happy place Oh my God. Seriously, like we all came to the book club enraged. And it was funny. Yeah. It's unifying. It's un- Nothing brings people together more than hatred. It's had it true. It's true. Yeah. So now without further ado, it is time for the Fast Five Stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five Stories that you need to know are brought to you by Rakuten, the smartest way to save money when you shop. You're getting cash back at over 3,500 stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. So like joining Rakuten is no brainer. Like 
just save money and do nothing. Hello. And you save money at some of the best like places you're already shopping, like Macy's. Okay, Jax, you're shopping. You're obviously know that Rakuten is there for you. So you go to Macy's. What are you buying? Because you know that you're going to end up saving money. Oh, what am I not buying? Right. Maybe some shoes, some shorts for summer, some seam laws. I'm really in my seam law era. Okay, Sephora. You can also shop rac with Rakuten there. Oh, I'm getting some clean beauty. I'm getting some SPF skincare. I'm getting some lipsticks. I love just getting a bunch of lipsticks and then having them in a in a container in my room. That's I what used I had. today and I loved what I found. Yeah. Also, even though I'm currently, you know, not shopping there in person, you can shop on Bloomingdale's um, with Rakuten. So Macy's, Adidas, Walmart, Nike, Bloomingdale's, Levi's, Urban Outfitters, Blue Mercury, YSL Beauty, Zappos, Wine.com, Samsung, Lenovo, Sephora, Kiehl's, Tarte, Fenty Beauty, Expedia, Dyson, so Petco. Where the pets go. Where the pets go. Rakuten has 17 million members who are already saving. Their members have earned over $4.6 billion in cash back. So start all your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cash back really adds up. Today's episode is also brought to you by GNC. So GLP-1 medications, as you guys know, I was on. They are taking the world by storm, helping many people transform their lives through weight loss. But all the possible side effects can be a major obstacle to the success. And that's why GNC is here with support through the journey, offering high quality nutritional solutions and lifestyle advice to help people through those issues and reach their weight loss goals. So if you've been on, on a GLP-1 medication, you know that actually being on it is a journey in itself, but then also going off of it is a journey in and of itself. And for me, like preparedness was the number one factor and having so many um, things at home when I, once I was off the medication from GNC was super helpful, like protein shakes, protein bars, supplements. If you're on the medication, you know how important a fiber supplement can be. You don't wanna learn that the hard way. Just let this be your message. Like, start it when you start the medication and shop the best supplements at GNC. Over 130 million Americans are living with a condition that are eligible for GLP-1 treatment. So as you guys know, I talk about it a lot. I had a fabulous experience. I highly recommend. But, you know, it's not without its challenges and, you know, needing support is totally fine. And GNC is a perfect place to shop um, for anything that you might need from being on the medications, like if you're having any side effects or being off the medications and, you know, shopping their total lean line of products, which have great protein bars, protein shakes, keeping you full all day long. So find the high high quality side effect solutions that you need at GNC. Plus right now you can save 25% on all hunger satisfying snacks and meal replacements from GNC Total Lean. Just go to gnc.com slash toast and use our code toast25 at checkout, gnc.com slash toast, code toast25 at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Game Time app. Game Time makes getting tickets for concerts and events faster and easier, even if you don't buy tickets at, right away. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to showtime. So they've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying concert tickets. Concert tickets has become some sort of like world war these days. I feel like everybody's like fighting to the death. Um, when it shouldn't be that hard, it should not be that expensive, and it shouldn't be that deceptive when you sign on and you know you buy a ticket and by the time you check out, the price has doubled because of all the fees. Well, thanks to Game Time, you're doing all in pricing. So you can toggle the feature that shows you the total upfront so there will be no surprise fees at checkout. You're getting seat views, a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. And really why Game Time is so great is that they have last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off by buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. You know, anything going on in your town, you can check out on Game Time. Flash deals, zone deals, and of course, their lowest price guarantee. They have that guarantee or Game Time will cover you 110% of the difference. The Game Time ticket coverage is your purchase being covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code TOAST for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code T-O-A-S-T for $20 off. Download Game Time today. It's last minute tickets. It's the lowest price. And it's... Warranty. From the Guaranti herself. From the Guaranti Cogers. Guaranti Cogers. <laughs> I think that should be the name of the episode. Guaranti Cogers, because it's like, that'll definitely keep this show from growing. Like people will, it's very in the know, you know? I love that. Yeah. Maybe today's episode should be like, do not listen to this. We're trying to deescalate. Yeah. We're too big. Too big. Our first story. Gwyneth Paltrow lists her LA home after her son's graduation inside her $30 million mansion. Oh, wow. So, a couple things here. First, Gwyneth Paltrow is preparing for an empty nest. The actress's youngest son, Moses, graduated from high school, so she put up her LA mansion on the market for $30 million. So, one, we're getting Damn, pics of Gwyneth's 
Gwyneth is home. No, and like the the girlies everywhere are quaking. Like I feel like Gwyneth has long been a leader in like design, aesthetic, aesthetic yeah. trad. She she makes everything from scratch. Oh, she's so trad. And she's a billionaire. So yeah. like this is inspo Pinterest. Like Pinterest has I think has crashed. Yeah. No, the house is beautiful. It's eight thousand square feet, but it's also it? weird in Brentwood. Brentwood. It's weirdly relatable. Like her son graduates from college and she's downsizing. And I feel like sometimes you think like you don't need to downsize when you're a, a billionaire. billionaire. But it's too much house for one woman. No, and when you are like a billionaire, actually your job becomes like managing your home. And she also has a, another job, like running a billion dollar business, Goop. So I could see this not being something. And I think a lot of people like wait till their kids leave because it's like sad for the kids. Right, also maybe she wants to move by the ocean or something that, that's too far from the kid's school. Or maybe she wants to move like where her, near where her kids go to school. Like I think a lot of like celebs like move to New York when their kids go to like NYU or whatever. Or maybe she wants to leave LA completely. Maybe she wants to move to a farm. I could so, but her Goop is headquartered there. So I actually don't know if she could. I think she can move her goop wherever the heck she wants. I mean, I could see her being one of those companies that, that moves to Austin. 100%. Uh, you know, I've been hearing more and more people from LA specifically moving to Austin. I just read it in an article, Glenn Powell's moving to Austin, he's but safe. he's from Texas. Oh, okay, so that's nice. Yeah, a lot of people from like Californians move to Texas, New Yorkers move, move to, to Florida. Florida. It's so true. But I guess technically you could also move to Texas. I know when we went to Austin, like- We definitely thought we like- were We were Austin curious. I definitely Austin curious yeah it's a nice town I know and I like how like there's suburbs and city not far from each other not it feels so like a hybrid up. of New York and Florida like the life you have and the life that I have like you yes. can have both in Austin because there are more urban elements and I just want to say like every time I you know see someone in person or whatever like or I do a Q&A they're like when are you moving to Florida and like I really have no plans to but if you said let's move to Austin like you have like a 75% chance of getting me there. Well, right I, now you have a 10% chance of getting me here. I wouldn't move without you. Like Oh no. So I'm, 75 doesn't work. No, no. Oh, 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 oh fine. At this point, but you, wait, sorry, if you moved to Austin, there would be a 100% chance of me moving. At this there. point like you need to move there and then try and convince me. Yeah, but you're older like you're in charge. Also, keep talking. The something in the, the light is bothering me. Something IT in the department, light? be right back. What's bothering you? I think we look like the gorgeous girls that we are. Just that. Okay, well, now even more beautiful. Anyway, so yeah, I wonder where Gwyneth will go. I'm finding it like just so normal mom, like empty nesting, let's downsize. Okay, I wanna Get a say, little beachside cottage. I don't know if you can still watch this episode um, because it was an episode of The Morning Breath, but when the first time I met Gwyneth and I came back and like obviously it was all I could talk about on the toast, that's exactly what I said about her. She gave such, nor and I was with her and she had like was also with her kids. So I saw her as just like a mom and she was like making lunch for everyone. She was so normal. She just reminded me of like a mom, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's kind of been a theme and why her business is successful, why she's successful. She's oddly relatable when for so many years, like the joke about her was that she wasn't relatable, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, thousand dollar candles that smell like your vagina or whatever. But at the end of the day, and she is, and when she went on Shark Tank, she said this too, um, cause somebody came on to talk about like grain free and they were talking about how grain free is the new gluten free. And she was like, you know at Goop, we were talking about gluten free like before anyone else and everybody made fun of us. And now like it's the thing. And she really went through like a couple of years where everything she did was made fun of, but nine of the, out of 10 things that she was talking about and doing are now commonplace. Yeah. In wellness and just like in culture. I feel like I even heard about like Wim Hof from her show. That? That's like cold plunging. Yeah, me, oh, me too. I feel like that episode of her show was the first time I heard about it. And then when we were like at the cold ocean, we were like, let's do it. Gwyneth said it's good. And now everyone has a cold plunge in their backyard. Oh my God, yeah. When we I were, guess like Wim Hof was the first one who said it, but like she is part of popularizing things. Yeah, and she like has goes through like a cycle where she gets like clowned on for things that end up becoming quite common yeah I love like I love this woman like you can't make me hate her and I feel like there were a couple of years where they were trying now I think everyone has come around to being like Gwyneth Paltrow like is that bitch even when she gave her two cents on the um Nepo baby conversation I feel like a lot of people liked what she had to say she just kind of like kills it in everything she does I think it's because she stays true to her authentic self I know and I think there were a couple of years where maybe that was challenging or every time she did there was like backlash but now the world has come around and it must feel so good. Yeah. But I also think she doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, no, because when I, when for so long, like people didn't understand you and were rude to you, then by the time it happens, like Miley, That's it's what like, I was oh, just okay, say. fuck you, but thanks. Yeah. No, I seriously am obsessed with yeah. Gwyneth. Yeah, I wonder where she'll move. I feel like I need to start keeping a list of like 
people that you're obsessed with? Yeah, not that I need to know, but when people ask me, like, who's your favorite celebrity? I, like, wouldn't say Gwyneth, but, like, she is, you know? Yeah. Who would you say? I don't know. Like, Taylor Swift, Luke Holmes. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow. Like, I need to start adding her to my top five, at least. Yeah. And also, the personal friendship I have with her doesn't hurt. Like, knowing her insides as well as her outsides. I can account telling you guys she's even better in person. Like, dead ass. And she makes really good food. She made me a taco once. Oh, green free? I'm not sure, actually. I think it was corn. It's corn grain. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I actually, I think I remember her like having all different types of tortillas, corn flour, because like everybody she, has, different. she lives her life, but she knows that other people like live life differently. Yeah. That's so nice. It really was. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. I don't really even know how to preface this other than I think you'll find it interesting. Okay. But Kelsey Grammer's daughter, Greer Grammer. Whom listens to the show, by the way. Hello, Greer. She's joining the Frasier reboot cute really cute so Frasier is re-entering the building on Paramount Plus uh season two on Paramount Plus the streaming service announced in February 2024 that the revival series um was renewed for a second season and now Variety is reporting that his real life daughter Greer Grammer is joining the cast in a key role okay well she's an amazing actress because if you've ever seen the iconic show that I reference here once a once a year probably awkward which I need to rewatch. um she played like one of the girls in high school who was like this ditzy and Everybody loved her and she was such a good actress and she's just like pretty and, and Hollywood royalty. So why not? And I love this. This is like an amazing example of nepotism. Like it is like you're literally his daughter. So play it, you yeah. know, life imitating. And art. she's also like an actress and a good one. Yeah. And I also feel like she doesn't abuse her um, place in in like her her position yeah because like if she wanted to she's Kelsey Grammer's daughter she could be as big as like a Maya Hawk or I feel like she actually like puts in the work and like minds her business and like just goes to auditions and stuff do you know and, what I mean yeah but maybe she's kind of done with that and it's like dad yeah in the show no she's like I've, I've put in the work like I paid my dues dad make a call <laughs> it is time she's so pretty and like I think this is fabulous I did not know they were doing a Frasier reboot Frasier is like a part of culture that just kind of it's went a gap over my head. for I mean it's before our time a little bit it's definitely a whole and that's a question we would lose on Jeopardy yep. trivia unless they ask who played Frasier or like who was who, Frasier married to who was also on reality tv who's Frasier's daughter what show was she on yeah everything I know about Frasier I really know from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills yeah and um, awkward and awkward and that's what's so crazy about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when you think about the fact that Kelsey Grammer was on it, even just for one season, and even though he literally used it as a vehicle to dump his wife on the side of the road. Um, but you know what? It was the greatest thing he could have ever done for her because she was going to be single either way. Yeah. And now she was single and famous. So, mm -hmm. And she still is. Single and famous. Isn't that a show? Famously single? Famously single. She also got $30 million, so like, it's fine. Yeah. It's crazy that they were married. That's what sounds seems crazy in hindsight, you know? Yeah, I think maybe it's time I rewatch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I haven't done it. I rewatched New York and it was like seriously one of the best experiences of my life. I think Beverly Hills will be that amazing too because you don't have a show that goes on this long without having some really strong, solid first seasons. No, and when you think about like seriously the monumental things that have, like Russell Armstrong. Yeah. Adrian Maloof. Like there are so many, and now Kelsey Grammer. Like yeah. pernicious. That first season like wasn't real. And when you also think about how many key players are still, you know, in the Lisa, Kyle. But also like the Kyle, Kim, Kim Kathy. Oh, right. And now you knowing stole Kathy. my goddamn house. I would love to rewatch that. Yeah. Because they used to talk about Kathy as if she was a sort of like mysterious. And now we know her. She's like the best. Yeah. Yeah, you should rewatch that. That would be a fun journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I think I'm right. Okay. And also, and now we've said it. And they were also tackling some really heavy things those early seasons with Taylor Armstrong. Yeah. When she sort of like admitted that she was being physically abused and then like a couple of episodes later her husband killed himself and they went to like financial ruin. Like that was really crazy. She yeah. doesn't get enough credit. Well, now she's on OC sometimes. Yeah. No, she's like I think a full castmate on OC. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, thank you to Entertainment Kelsey. Tonight, Kelsey and Greer for bringing Real Housewives of Beverly Hills back into Turdy's life. Yeah. And perhaps awkward. Yeah. I would rewatch re -watch Awkward in a second. Like, that show was so good. <laughs> Are you ready for our next story, which I chose for you and you only? Oh my God, a personalized story. How could I not be ready for something like this? Hairspray star Nikki Blonsky marries <gasps> Haley Joe Jensen. A, a girl? 
Yes. Oh, a queer queen. I didn't know that. Nikki Bonsky. Happy Pride. <laughs> Nikki Bonsky is married. The 35-year-old actress, best known for her role as Tracy Turnblad in the 2007 perfectly cast movie Hairspray, <laughs> revealed to Elle magazine that she and her partner Haley Jo Jensen are officially married. I'm obsessed. The couple who announced okay. their engagement in September 2022 are going public as a couple after going public in June of that year. Eloped on October 21st, 2023. So they've been married for a while. I mean, I should have known this as the president of Nikki Blonsky's fan club, but let me just check her Instagram to see if she like posted anything. When did they get married? October 2023. No, she's posted nothing. Also, the, this publication notes that they both use... Oh, and this is confusing. She, her. No, it's, it's so she, she, her. Okay, Nikki, she, her, but Jensen uses they, them. Okay, But well, I haven't referenced Jensen yet. Do you so. want to know what Nikki Blonsky's bio is on Instagram? Um, good morning, Baltimore. You're so close, like actually. Uh, nicest kid in town? Mama, I'm a gay girl now. Like obsessed. The thing with Nikki Blonsky, much like Gwyneth Paltrow, they could never make me hate her. They never could. She's so iconic. And the thing is, she knows she's being iconic too, which like makes it even better. I feel like with Gwyneth, it's all so natural. And with Nikki Blonsky, it's all so staged. And I live for everything she delivers. Her social media isn't what it should be. I do want to say that after just like giving a quick brief. What would you like to see on there? She doesn't post a lot. And I'm glad it's like not all hairspray stuff because I could see that being her... Um, her like shtick yeah she's on a new peacock show she's in the movie bosco an incredible experience she's a wonderful cast and crew to thank what about lighting special thanks she to her incredible lighting. leading man oh my she's on a movie on peacock february 2nd oh wait it came out okay she well, doesn't post a lot movie night tonight movie night tonight the thing is nikki blonsky being cast in hairspray while i do you know I believe it should have been me at the time. I'm, I'm actually happy it wasn't. You were 13. Perfect. So was Tr literally, so was Tracy. <laughs> so true. She's literally a freshman. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Well, it should have been me. And I'm so glad it wasn't actually because she, like, she played it perfectly um, to a point where it destroyed her career. Like you could never cast her in anything ever again because she's just Tracy. She's just Tracy. Yeah. It's that iconic of a role. Yeah. But Bosco, I mean, maybe it'll be a departure for her. I mean, it came out a couple of months ago and we haven't heard anything about it. So I, I'm glad she's like booking gigs, obviously. And she was cast for like open casting call. Is that correct? She was a hair a hairdresser in New Jersey who just went for the role. I think so. I think that's kind of been the tradition of Tracy's. Like even when they did Hairspray Live, the girl who played Tracy, I think it was also from an open casting call. Like I think that's I love that. the tradition. Except I don't know if that's what happened with Ricky Lake. No, but she's the OG Tracy. Yeah, Turnblad. but then so then why did it then become like an always going to be an unknown? Because literally they don't make any fat people famous. So like who could they cast? Who can we lift up and yeah. support? Right. That's beautiful. Because I'm even trying to think like of the people we know now who are famous, who is like a chubby girl who can sing? And who's that age? You can't be like older than 25. To do what? To be Tracy. Like today? Would, yeah, right. Who would we cast as Tracy today? Right. I'm, I'm, my brain isn't like, just like you can't think of Gwyneth Paltrow sometimes, I can't think of every actress. Well, that's, what, the, that's why they have to open cast. That's why. Because you can't even think of someone. And we can think of something for everything. I didn't even think yet. Think. I'll give you a couple seconds. <laughs> no, but now the pressure's on. But sure. I, I like an open casting. So do I. Like, give someone who's not related to Kelsey Grammer a chance. Yeah, but Greer Grammer for Amber Von Tussel? Honestly. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't want to go down this role of recasting Hairspray in like a mod because it's perfect the way it is. And we've said that. Even Hairspray Live was a perfect casting. Sorry, I almost just fell over. Um, yeah, I don't know if I saw Hairspray Live. It was kind of a clusterfuck and they honestly, a little bit of a fail. Like, I do miss the days where like a consistent story here on the toast was like what they were producing next. Annie for Live? What they were doing next for life. Who was Take being cast? Take me back to Annie Live. When people ask me, like, what were the greatest days of your life? Like, it was the days leading up and months to Annie Live. I, I literally don't disagree. And then Annie Live itself was incredible. And they could never make me hate Annie Live. No, it was amazing. And you know what? I don't want to jinx it because then, like, someone... And the thing is, you had to watch it live to appreciate how good it is. Because if you watch it on demand, you're like, oh, there's... Mis but it's the magic of live. Right. And then the way they really had that dog working overtime, like... It was really incredible. And I don't want to jinx it because 
it's and possible. And they even did the ads live in the in the way of like old radio. It was perfect. I don't think there's been a remake of Annie that has been bad. I agree. With the Quinn Jenny Wallace, Jamie Foxx one, like so good, was so good. And then of course the Annie we grew up with, and then you know Kathy Bates. Like there's two Annies we grew up. Like the first one. That's the old one. But then there was a, a remake, Victor Garber. Which was Amazing. incredible. They added some new songs too. Let's go to the movies. Oh my God, that was a new song? I'm pretty sure. They've never fucked up Annie. It's actually crazy. It's a perfect story. It's a perfect story. It's a story that just sort of tells itself. Yeah. And the characters are so like classic. I just feel like they always do a good job. Yeah, like Miss Hannigan. What would you do live next? Oh, what a fun question. Hmm. I have to think of everything. Because we've done Peter Pan. Of course, my mind goes to like Greatest Showman. Ooh. Like that's like a more modern musical. Might be hard musical. with like the elephants. Well, they just did the Beauty and the Beast one live with her. Oh, yeah. Was that live? Yeah. Was it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that one. And but Shania. We watched, we watched that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Josh Groban, right? Yeah. That one was good. That was good. But it kind of came That one didn't have as went. much fanfare. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It wasn't, I don't know why, like as big of a story. Of course, Grease Live was amazing. By the way. Oh, and they did Rent Live. But that was like. But there was drama there. Someone broke his leg and it just. Yeah. I think they wound up even maybe showing the rehearsal or yes, something. Yes, yes. No, the the re, the Grease Live was really crazy. Vanessa Hudgens' father passing away the day before and her still showing up. But Grease Live was perfection like Annie. Yeah. They did The Wiz Live. Yep. Peter Pan with um, Allison Williams. That was really crazy. That yeah. was really crazy. Sound of Music Live with Carrie Underwood. Like those were the days, you know, take me back. Yeah, no, what's our next one? What's our next one? I'm ready. Well, it's been like remade recently, but like Lion King Live, Northwest um, Simba, oh, Trigger, was, Trigger Nation. It was remade recently. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. I feel like, did they do the Little Mermaid Live? No, they just remade oh, it right. live action. Right, right, right. But like, that's kind of hard because it's under the sea. Like, I don't need to see like a fake yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's giving community theater if they did it live. Yeah. What are some great musicals? They should do High School Musical live. That's what they should do. On ABC, because it's, by the way, that's an incredible idea. Yeah. Okay, who are we casting? Vanessa Olivia Hudgens Rodrigo. is Olivia Rodrigo. I was going to say the same thing. She would never. And Zac Efron. She would never. Zac Efron. Who's like a modern Zac? Noah Centineo. <laughs> You know what the else they could do live? Maybe what Frozen, but it's again with the like the snow. It's no, a little hard. Like it. She doesn't like it. like it. She doesn't like it. Moana, hard with the ocean. Hard with the ocean. Dear Evan Hansen. It's like a little depressing. I agree. I'm Greatest Showman. When in doubt, Greatest Showman. Yeah, Footloose. Not a musical, is it? They don't like no. Break it's not. They just dance. They just dance. Yeah. Footloose is so good. Yeah. It is. Okay, so just like some ideas. I'm ready for my next live, all to say. Yeah, all to say, like, guess, powers that be, we're ready. I guess we get lives at Christmas time. Yes, Annie was in December, because I remember I was on the Not Like Other Girls tour, like, literally devastated that I was doing a show, not at home watching Annie. And I think this past year was Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. So we another thing to look forward to this holiday season. Can't wait. We're, like, low-key getting close, not to, like, be that girl. Yeah. But we've entered the latter half of the year. We ha uh, By the end of this month, I think. Because we're in the sixth Yeah, month. okay, shit, you're right, yeah. Yeah, but I'm really happy that I'm excited about summer. You know, it's a good I feeling. feel like sometimes I dread summer, but like I'm excited for summer. And then after summer, it's like football, chilly. Oh my God. Rolling into the holidays. Like I'm really excited. Yeah. So are you ready for our next story? Number what? four. No. You're not ready. No. She you didn't look ready. Shit, you caught me. So off. you're literally sabotaging me. I'm so sorry. The latter half of the show is brought to you by Quince. Much like the latter half of the year. Whenever we're gearing up for our next trip, deciding what to pack is so stressful. The clothes we have, like, this is just in general. Either, do, like, just stopped fitting, don't work for the season. Like, I'm never matched up with my closet. But then we discovered Quince. It's our go-to for high-quality vacation essentials that we'll be packing for all of our trips to come. They've got premium European linen dresses, blouses and shorts. Seamless. Seamless from $30. $30 seamless? Like, who doesn't love that? They've got washable silk tops, premium luggage options, and so much more. But the best part about Quince and shopping at Quince, which really sets it apart, is that all of their items are, pri items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. So they're made really well, but they're priced completely differently. And how they do that is by partnering with top factories directly they're cutting out the cost of the middleman and then they are passing those savings on to the customers quince also only works with factories that use safe ethical and responsible manufacturing practices 
and premium fabrics and finishes. As Jackie Goldschneider would say, they only use top quality fabric. And mm -hmm. we love that. We also love that we're saving money. And we also love that, like we said, a theme of the last year, and Jackie was just talking about this, is investing in less pieces, but better pieces. And Quince is the perfect place. I've got so many great basics from there, like just good trousers, black trousers, nice cashmere sweaters that I can like wear differently and you won't know that I'm wearing the same sweater because it's, what do they call it? A capsule collection wardrobe. So pack your bags with high quality essentials from Quince. Go to quince.com slash toast for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash toast to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Armra. You know we're always on the lookout for ways to strengthen our immunity, improve our fitness and metabolism, and elevate our skin. And we've recently discovered an incredible brand, Armra. So Armra is colostrum. It's a bioactive whole food. So colostrum is the first nutrition that we receive in life, and it contains all the essential nutrients that you need in order to thrive. Armora is a proprietary concentrate of bovine colostrum. It harnesses over 400 functional nutrients to strengthen your immune barriers and fuel cellular health, for a host of research back benefits. Armor Colostrum strengthens immunity, ignites metab metabolism, fortifies your gut health, activates your hair growth and skin radiance, and powers fitness performance and recovery. So there's a ton of different benefits from Armor, whatever you're looking for, whether it's, you know, skin, gut, fitness. Um, it's just a great thing to start your day with. It's also just great to be in a routine and like doing something every morning that, to get your, your day started. And Armra is really popular and really fabulous for a reason. And we've worked out a special offer. For the toasters, if you want to receive 15% off your first order of Armra, go to tryarmra.com slash toast or enter code toast at checkout to get 15% off your order. Tryarmra.com is spelled T R Y. A-R-M-R-A dot com slash toast. Armra is sustainably sourced. So that's tryarmra.com. The code is T-O-A-S-T -T to get 15% off your first order. You'll enjoy it. You will enjoy it. And today's episode is also brought to you by Byheart. Byheart is an infant nutrition company built from the ground up to deliver real innovation on behalf of babies and parents. Their mission is simple, make the best formula in the world. This year, our friends at Byheart, the only American-made formula with globally sourced ingredients, to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, never skim. They are celebrating all the ways in which they never skim on anything, especially your babies. Byheart never skims on healthy fats using only organic, grass-fed whole milk. Whole milk is full of healthy fats like naturally occurring MFGM, which play an important role in brain growth and development. Brain development and growth as well. <laughs> And By Heart never skims on their standards. Their formula is made with certified clean ingredients, plus it has no soy, corn syrup, GMOs, or palm oil. So try By Heart today and celebrate their commitment to never skim on all the important benefits when it comes to infant formula. If you recognize anything in the pre-fast five banter, it's that we're never skimming around here. When it's there's true. babies and there's kids, you want the best ingredients, limited amount of ingredients, mm -hmm. not all this CRAP, and By Heart is committed to that mission of never skimming ever, and I love that they use organic grass-fed whole milk major key are you curious about byheart redeem your welcome offer at byheart.com slash podcast with code toast 20 for a limited time additional terms and conditions apply thank you so much jack and thank you byheart for sponsoring today's episode thank you to all of our sponsors truly we couldn't actually couldn't and wouldn't do this without you it means the world our next story is so crazy and seriously gives me the willies. And I don't know if you've heard it yet because I only heard it from Entertainment Tonight. The willies, okay. The willies. Taylor Momsen <sighs> needs... Taylor Momsen, you all know, Jenny, Jenny from Gossip Girl, Cindy Lou Who from The Grinch. Taylor Momsen needs rabies shots for two weeks after a bat bites her leg while performing on stage in Spain. The whole thing is caught on camera. So Taylor Momsen posted a video to her Instagram of her concert in Spain. She said, so rock and roll moment in Sevilla Wednesday during Witch's Burn of all songs. That's really crazy. Yeah. A bat flew onto me and clung to my leg in the moment I was performing and had no idea until the incredible crowd kept screaming and pointing. He was cute, but yes, he bit me. So rabies shots for the next two weeks. Thanks to all the staff at the hospital who dubbed me Batgirl after seeing it on the local news that morning. Also, it's worth mentioning that she's wearing, it looks tights. to be some tights and a, a lace dress. So he's at the end of her dress. I could imagine like not feeling oh, yeah. the bat. And also you're on stage. There's like adrenaline. There's oh a lot God, of things Claudia, going on. I can't even look. You could... I can't even look at this. By the way, like, are bats just flying around? I don't know why I thought they, like, existed in medieval times. Like, 
I don't know. I and also like in the I didn't know they go on stage that they like music. Yeah, they go no. to concerts. It's really crazy. And seriously, if you watch a video, it's amazing how calm she remained. Like if that were me and everybody's pointing at something and I look down and like when there's even a mosquito, like seriously, I'm screaming. When it's not when it's a stain. <laughs> yeah, no. When it's literally like one I of my own hairs. Know that about you. Yeah, when my own hairs like brushes up against my shoulder, I sc- seriously, she's so calm and collected. It's impressive. This is seriously the stuff of nightmares. And I'm saying seriously a lot. I'm, I'm hearing because it Because it's very, very serious. serious. I've never even thought about bats or been fearful or concerned about them. But like this image, and I didn't even watch the whole video. I just like see a, a still bat. image of a bat on her lace dress. Like, I'm not okay. Stories like this are devastating for a multitude of reasons, but primarily because it just gives us one more thing to worry about. Like, yeah. I didn't know that bats were like a, something I had to be thinking about at all. No. Like there's so much going on in my life. Right. And now there's more. Yeah. Also, it was during her song, Witches Burn. And like bats and witches, they're like of yeah, the same Yeah, no. Look. And I just feel like it's very Carlton Jebbia coded. And this is why I don't play around with dark magic, you know? No. I can't believe it bit her. And, and now she has rabies shots for two. Like this is a crazy story. And why did I think rabies... I don't associate rabies and bats. What animal do you associate rabies with? Um, a lot of them. Like, who? What's what's classic rabies? Do you know what I mean? Like a a rat, no. a mouse, a squirrel. I was thinking squirrel. Yeah. Why do I associate rabies and squirrels? I think just because squirrels are like more ubiquitous. Yeah, and I would we say see squirrels every day. I saw a squirrel this morning walking around your neighborhood because I was taking Romeo for a walk. And it got me thinking about squirrels. I feel like growing up, they got such a bad rap, you know? You think? Yeah, I just feel like because they were always around like in the schoolyards, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're good kids. They are. And I feel I like see- they're harmless. Like they're so afraid of us. Like I actually feel bad for them. Yeah, they make me laugh. They're always messing with Brew. Like they run into the trees and he hears them. So he goes and then they run. Like he's always playing with squirrels. And chipmunks. What could be cuter? Yeah. But I guess you do have to worry about the rabies. Right. I guess that's why. I feel like there was seriously also, like a smear campaign against squirrels in the early 2000s that really, like, it worked on me because I was always just like, stay away, stay away, you know, rabies. Yeah. But also bats can carry other diseases. Like, remember when people were saying that's how COVID started. Yeah. I don't know where we landed on that. That wasn't true or not. No, that wasn't true. But diseases can come from bats, which is why, like, initially it sounded like something, plausible. Right, right. Bird flu. Batman. What about him? Was bitten by a bat, no? Oh, was he? That was, I know Spider-Man was bitten by a spider, but I never saw Batman. Cast Taylor Momsen in Batgirl for her troubles. That's, Problem solved. That's the moral of the story today. Like, seriously, I have the willies. willies. Do you not? I do. I saw it a couple of days ago, so I've sat with it for a while. Oh, okay. I look forward and to she, it. And by the way, she looks the same. She's literally giving Jenny Humphrey in that video. Oh, of course. She's still doing her Jenny Humphrey thing. Yeah, just like emo and like slouched over with her side bangs. Yeah. So, Rafua Shalema. To everyone involved. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yeah. Which is a little beverage news. A little crazy beverage news, sort of. CBN? CBN, sort of. SO. Okay. (laughs) Pepsi's reign as America's number two soda is over. The underdog has overtaken it. You're lying. So Pepsi very nearly won its bitter battle to take over Coca-Cola as America's number one soda in the 80s, but now it has slipped behind Dr. Pepper, which is now in the second spot. Oh, I thought you were going to say they took over for number one. No, now they've slipped to three. Oh, shit. Dr. Pepper is number two. Oh, shit. Okay, I mean, I'm such a Pepsi enthusiast. Like I, and you guys know, like Diet Coke is my personality. But if you were to like come up to me and have one can of each, I would choose Diet Pepsi. I actually think it tastes better. But like branding wise, they, they haven't gotten there yet. Like saying yeah. Diet Pepsi doesn't roll off the tongue. And, and I think so, that meme like did a lot of damage. Like is Pepsi okay? It's no. not. It's actually not. But it is. It is, right. But that meme. Yeah, and so, and so while I think that that has been really damaging, I also think there's been a movement online for Di- Dr. Pepper Dr. Pepper too. So those two things, that's really shocking though. Like, because Dr. Pepper, like is, the thing is the way people treat Diet Pepsi and Diet Coke is like a replacement for water. Dr. Pepper has always been like a specialty like beverage. Like a flavored one. What's it flavored with? Like, like cherry? black cherry, okay. yeah. yeah. So it's always been like a specialty item. And, but more and more people, it's become people's go-to. Like instead of a water, I'll get a Dr. Pepper. It's kind of taking the place, yeah. Yeah. A Diet Pepsi. And for me in my heart, like when I have a fridge full of soda, like number one is 
Diet Coke. Number two is Dr. Pepper. And number three would be Pepsi. Now, am I correct in, in thinking that um, PepsiCo actually owns Dr. Pepper? So Rising Tides rise all shides? Oh, Rising Tides definitely rise all PepsiCo, shides. Because PepsiCo, like say what you want about them, they literally own everything. They own Taco Bell. Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay. Like every, like they're, I would say, I wonder as a company, I'm not take, talking about the beverage. Okay, like grandma with the loud. Sorry, Keurig Dr. Pepper. Keurig oh, so it's owns not, Dr. Pepper. So it's not PepsiCo. No. Good for them. The Keurig machine. Like, sorry to Keurig and Nespresso's here. So PepsiCo worth, like what is PepsiCo worth? $238 billion. Now let's see what Coca-Cola is worth. Probably similar. What did I say before? 238 273 I feel like this is a movie That's Jerry weird, Seinfeld will make in 50 years. Yeah. About the soda war wars. I would actually love a movie about the soda wars. Not the soda wars? Yeah, the, so the rural juror first and then the sequel, the soda wars. Um, yeah, that'd be a good movie. Like, how did these two get started? Yeah. And at the same time, they do a very similar thing. That's yeah. classic. It's Snow White. It's Snow White. I bet there was somebody in like the 50s who had a list. I mean, like, why is there Diet Coke and Dr. Pep and Diet Pepsi? It's like me reincarnated. <laughs> Literally. She changes over time, but her lists remain the same. Yeah. But you were taking out like a quill pen. Oh, of course. The medium is different. The message, the, the same. same. I love that. Yeah. Um, that is a crazy story. Thank you so much for sharing. But seriously, the more I think about it, like Dr. Pepper has a really good online presence in terms of just like its place in culture. And I think, of course, hiring Justin Guarini really put them over the edge because it's the sweet one. A I lot think, of people don't know that little man from the commercial is Justin Guarini from American Idol and from Justin to Kelly. It's the sweet one. I think Pepsi needs to get Britney back in the studio. I the actually joy of Pepsi. Say, or like Addison. I have to imagine ba, actually ba, ba, ba. Pepsi has definitely come to Britney. Like, because they really lean into like their I actually history. don't think they should go to Britney because I think it wouldn't it be would, the same. No, and it would be like, oh, we'll never be like better than that moment. Like, I think they need to recreate that moment with Tate McRae. Like, I was going to say Tate McRae. Who do you think is like the, the rising pop it girl? Pop. Not like Olivia Rodrigo, because she's like... Yeah. She's like not... She is pop, but like, I mean, like 90s core. Like, I know who it is for me. Mimi Webb? Yeah. But in America. But probably Tate McRae. That's what people are saying. And she just was interviewed by Britney for a magazine. Right. Very. That was like kind of a big deal for Tate. And it could have been Addison, but she set the crown down and walked away. She did. It was Addison's choice, choice. to not be the next Britney. Not anyone else's. It wasn't Deandra's and it wasn't Sophie's. It was Addison's choice. And like we were ready for her. Yeah, we were. But she she didn't want it. Queen. My nails to die for. My head, this uh uh sex to die for. Oh, I want some of the things I'm to die for. And Sabrina has a new album coming out, but Sabrina doesn't dance hard. Like that's no. not her thing. She like struts. Yeah, she does a choreography minimally, which is so classic, like girly. But yes, she announced a new album yesterday called Short and Sweet, which we love because she's classic four us. feet tall. Um, and I think it's really promising. Like that's something I'm really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. When does it come out? August 12th. Shit. She's kind of like missing out on like it being like the album of the summer. For sure. But Espresso, I think, is the song of the summer. And I think it will be like nominated for Grammy. Yeah. I like I'm I can't say it enough times. I feel like I say it once a week on the show. Like I'm so happy for her success. Like after everything she went through with, you know, Olivia Rodrigo Gate and then like her rebuttal song like flopping. Like I'm so glad. Skin never flopped for me. I just want you guys to know. And definitely stream skin because you missed out. Yeah, you did. I did. I never skim on skin. She never skins. She never and skins. you'll only get that if you listen to the ads. Don't skip through. It's true. Don't so many, skim on our ads. So many inside jokes you might be missing out on if you're skipping out on our ads and not supporting our sponsors. If so. you're skimming. That's our show, you guys. I'm about to put Jackie to work. I have so many ideas for TikToks to make. Trips to the Cape. Can't wait. Trips as long as I'm wearing makeup, like, I'll do whatever you need me to do. So... Without further ado, thank you so much for listening to the Tesla Millennial Morning Show where we deliver the fast life stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast and our podcast can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, Radio Castbox, all the places where it's been a social media, but I'll be about how about how stunning, about how wickedly talented we are. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.